Minister Reddy, you were speaking earlier on about the challenges that you faced in, in, an, in the context of a newly formed state and trying to respond to the pandemic. Just talk to me then about how do we future-proof health systems against those kind of pandemics that you've spoken about from a governance perspective as well? As I said earlier, governments would have to be focusing on two things. One is preventive, one is preventive care and the other is curative care. And looking at this from the, uh, from the lens of uh, uh, how to improve this uh, health care, one would have to be talking about availability, accessibility of health care, and also affordability of health care. All these three would have to be moving in line. In order to do that, uh, from my state's perspective as to how we have, how, like, how we have been uh, uh, wanting to move forward is, we've taken every uh, 2,000 people, uh, every pop population with, uh, every village with 2,000 population as a unit, and we're coming up with uh, village clinics. Okay. And then uh, we're taking up every uh, 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 30,000 population as a unit, as a, a unit and uh, uh, classifying it as Mandal, and where we're coming up with two PHCs, uh, primary health centers. These primary health centers would have uh, 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 four doctors, two of the doctors uh, uh, present in each of the PHC center, and they would be given uh, an ambulance, 104, and each of this doctor would be given their designated villages. So five villages or four villages, depending on the mandal size, to each of these doctors. And these doctors, every alternate day, would hop onto the ambulance and visit the village. And they would become the family doctor for that village. Very soon, the doctors, because they've been de designated only those four villages, so they would start to identify people by names. And they would use this village clinic as a hub. This village clinic primarily would be having an A&M, uh, nursing graduate, uh, mid-level health practitioner, and ASHA workers that we spoke about also reporting there. So that would take care of the, the preventive part. Now comes the curative part. The curative part would be dealing with uh, uh, the community, with uh, uh, district hospitals, the teaching hospitals. And the area, hosp area hospitals and the teaching hospitals are going to play a very critical role there. So there we are coming up with uh, uh, every parliament taken as a unit uh, we've, uh, uh, in order to ensure that there is equitable distribution of uh, teaching hospitals. Because only when you have, when you, only when you establish teaching hospitals, you have postgraduate students actually coming up there. And only when you have postgraduate students doing their course there, and these uh, teaching hospitals are connected to a, a hospital, a teaching hospital as well. So teaching college and teaching hospital together would become the tertiary care that, we're, that we are looking for. Thank you very much. It's very encouraging to hear uh, all of you. I think uh, two things, and then I'll come to the question. First is I think the pandemic has shown us fundamentally if health is not prioritized, everything can come to a stand down. So Chief Minister Reddy, it's so encouraging to hear you. To you, my question would be that uh, strengthening of the primary health care system requires a lot of effort. We know of the doctor population ratio. We know that we don't have enough doctors, but the pandemic has also shown us imagining new partnership, the religious communities and their assets, for example. So that's the question to you. And the second question, of course, uh, is, to, is to companies like AstraZeneca, which have made such a huge difference uh, in the transfer of not only intellectual rights and, and, and products and vaccines. India is a beneficiary. India is also a contributor. Is how do we keep children as priority. I'm not asking our <laughs> colleagues from UNICEF, but I'm asking you. I come from a country where 44% of the population are below 18. They have been the invisible face of the pandemic to quote UNICEF. They will need 24 months, if not more, of investment to just come out of this crisis. How can we put, uh, and to you as well, how can we put children back on the roadmap? Um, they are not our priority at the moment. And you were speaking of resilience. One of the things that we say in public health, I head a Gandhian organization in India. We say it's 
mental health, when we speak of mental health and resilience, we say it's a connection between internal assets that a child has and external resources that a society provides. The pandemic really has shown us that that link has to be established. So to people who can make a difference for children from outside, UNICEF keeps advocating that we have missed many opportunities to do that. And to you, Chief Nisaredi, it's so wonderful to hear you speak um, about the healthcare system, but it will require persistence. Already this year, the central budget in India has a shrunken health budget. Mm. So how do we keep that going? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The you minister's daughter. <laughs> It's a very lengthy question. Like, <laughs> put forth a lot of them. But uh, as she rightly said, uh, we have constraint on the funds. But yes, this is something that we need to deal with it. And uh, in spite of our uh, uh, difficulties, we're pushing through with it. And uh, uh, we've uh, uh, allocated a three-year window where we're wanting to mobilize uh, $2 billion, 16,000 crores into this whole setup. And uh, uh, we, do, we, are head, we are heading in the right direction and we will do it. And as far as the doctors are concerned, as you have, I mean, as you have just spoken, we, we do understand that this is a predicament that we need to deal with it. And that's exactly why we are trying to open up more medical colleges. We're coming up, the state had 11 uh, uh, teaching colleges medical medical colleges till we had uh, till my till our regime had come in now we are actually opening up 16 medical colleges so covering uh, uh, every taking every uh, parliament as a unit so that there is uniformity in distribution and uh, a teaching hospital and uh, a, 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 and a medical college together would provide for postgraduate students to come in and provide for the health care. Thank you so much, dear speakers. I'm Nupur Kohli. I'm a global shaper from the Amsterdam hub. We are young people between the age of 18 and 30 from the World Economic Forum. I also work for the largest healthcare insurance company in the Netherlands. So my question to you is, looking at healthcare resilience, what do you think is the role of healthcare insurance in many countries where it's actually not available? And I feel it's a primary human right to also have healthcare insurance in many countries. Is there a specific person that you'd like to answer the question or is it open to the floor? Um, I would like uh, uh, Mr. Johansson and also uh, dear Chief Minister to answer okay. those questions. How Thank you. you that? Thank you. Uh, as she rightly pointed out, this was the is a major concern. In fact, uh, to address this, the country as such had uh, uh, under the leadership of uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, had launched a program by name Aishman Bharat. It's a, a more or less a, a combination of, uh, it's more like an insurance part where uh, the state governments are also involved in settling the claims. Uh, the funds come from central government, but it deals with 1,000 procedures or so. That is not sufficient, it's inadequate. So in the state of Andhra Pradesh, we have widened that scope and uh, we have uh, come up with our own uh, insurance scheme. It's called YSR Arogdashri scheme. Uh, I named it after my father because that's the kind of uh, priority that I give to that scheme. Uh, so I just want uh, it to be remembered and I want to do a good job out of it. So what we have done is we've scaled the number of procedures to 2,446. From 1,000 what the central government supports, we had increased that uh, to 2,446 uh, procedures. And practically, uh, we have distributed cards to 1.44 crore houses. And uh, we've increased the limit for the eligibility of this card to uh, income limit of five lakhs per annum. So anybody whose income is less than five lakhs per annum is eligible for this card. And uh, 1.44 crores out of the total households of approximately 1.5 uh, uh, to 1.53 crores cards that we uh, households that we have, 1.44 crore cards are covered under this scheme. Okay. And the uh, last three years, uh, uh, we've uh, done almost, we've helped almost 25 lakh people mm -hmm. uh, uh, get treatment uh, free of cost here. Awesome.